Greetings and God bless you. This is your host, Apostle Dr. Dwan Jackson, and I am the host of Deborah's Voice. I'm excited to introduce to you a new topic that we're going to be sharing from on this week. But I want to remind you first to make sure that you take time to go and visit us on the social media pages. I'm on Facebook as Dewan Jackson. I'm on Instagram as Dewan Jackson. Also visit my YouTube page as Apostle Dr. Dewan Jackson and subscribe, hit the like button and continue to follow us through all of the social media pages. Well, today I want to say to you that I want to prepare to take you into the word of God. But before we go, we're going to pray for you as we always do. We pray as we begin to go forth in the broadcast. And of course, I'll pray for you at the end. I want to let you know on today that we're going to be talking about the power of prayer. This is one of the things that is going to catapult your life and change you forever. So I want to start just with the word of prayer as we open up the broadcast and then we're going to share an awesome word of God that's going to bless each and every one of your lives on today. So let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we just thank you for this day. We praise you. We honor you. We glorify your holy name, O oh God, and we thank you for each and every one of our viewers. We thank you, Father, for those, Lord God, that are watching this show today. And we pray, Father, that you will intervene on their behalf, minister to them afresh and anew. And God, we give you all the praise, the glory, and the honor. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, I pray that that prayer has touched somebody today. Well, we're getting ready to go into the word of the Lord on today, and truly it's going to be a blessing unto your hearts. I'm going to talk to you today about the power of prayer, and I want you to understand today that this is a secret weapon. Many times growing up in many churches and going to different seminars, trainings, different things around the world um, as I have, I noticed that the there is a lack of prayer. And sometimes people don't realize or don't understand that the most powerful thing that we can do behind anything is to pray. And so I want to give you some key scriptures on today and show you the power of how God moves when we begin to pray. I'm telling you, miracles begin to happen, signs and wonders begin to come forth when we learn how to pray. And so a lot of people love to sing, people love to hear the preaching, people love to see many manifestations in ministry, but a lot of times we don't know how does this power come forth? How is this power demonstrated? How are we able to see the things that God wants to do, amen, on the forefront behind the scenes? So how do you know that this happens? It happens through the power of prayer. Let's read the word of the Lord. A very simple scripture is where I want to start with you on today. In 1 Thessalonians 5, 17, it says that men ought to pray with out ceasing. The Bible says this. It says that men ought to do what? They ought to pray without ceasing. So we must understand that prayer must be a continuous priority in our lives. If I'm going to function in the capacity that God has, no matter where it's on my job, no matter whether it's on my in my home, no matter whether it's in my ministry, one of the things I have to do is I have to learn to pray. Jesus taught his disciples the simple prayer. He said, listen, he said, they asked him, they said, teach us to pray. And Jesus began to teach them the prayer. Amen. The Lord's prayer, the famous prayer that you hear about in the word of the Lord. But I want us to understand that when the Bible says to pray without ceasing, that we are to take the time to function daily in prayer. So it's not necessarily that I have to spend all day laying down or kneeling or crying out before the Lord, but I take a posture of prayer, which means that my mind and my mental status is always conscious that Jesus is there. My mental status is always conscious that I'm able to have communion with him, fellowship with him, speak with him daily about several things throughout my day. So when I'm praying without ceasing, that I understand that God himself is always present. Amen. God is omnipresent. And so when I understand that God is omnipresent, I understand that I have access 
to be able to connect with God. Amen. I have access to be able to connect with God. One of the things I can tell you that we will see throughout the Bible and throughout, amen, our walk in Christ is our power of our faith and the power of our prayer. If we give God these two things, we will see manifestations, we will see results, and we will see life-changing manifestations come forth for us. Do you know what happens when you pray? God begins to intervene. Do you know what happens when you begin to call upon the Lord? He begins to answer. The Bible says in Jeremiah 33 and 1 through 3, he says, if you call upon him, then what? He will answer. He says, call upon me and I will what? I will answer. And I will begin to show you great and mighty things. How many know that all he requires of us to do is to call? That means that we must be in the proper positioning to be able to hear, amen, what it is that we desire, amen, and what it is that we want and what it is that we're asking of the Lord. And then all we need to do to, is invest the time to begin to call, amen, invest the time to begin to reach out to God, letting him know that, listen, I want to commune with you. I want to conversate with you. I want to spend time with you sharing my heart. Prayer is simply, amen, communication with God. It is you going before the Lord, amen, opening up yourself, giving of yourself, talking to God and sharing, amen, your most heart's desire, the depth of your heart, what it is that you believe that you need God to do. And so here, when we think about this and the Lord says for us to call upon him, right, and he will answer us, then we must know and be assured that when I pray, God will answer. You must understand that when I pray that God will answer. There is no other avenue, amen, that God responds to other than faith and prayer, amen? So when I understand that, not only do I cry out to God or call to God or begin to put my petitions before the Lord, but I also come into a stature where I begin to execute my faith according to what I have prayed for. And it brings me into the position to be able to stand before God, trusting and knowing that he's going to bring it to pass. Let me tell you something. When you take prayer seriously, things begin to happen want to testify. You know, each week I give you some type of something that has taken place as we begin to prayer, to pray. I want to, I want to let you know today that as we begin to release prayers in the atmosphere, that manifestations happen. So one of the times I was just seeking the face of God, learning how to pray, learning how to intercede. And I began to ask God, I began to go before the Lord and begin to pray and begin to call upon the Lord and ask him to do a miracle in my body. I want to tell you something something. Over 25 years ago, I had a health condition in my body. And as I began to pray and commune with God daily, I began to ask the Lord to heal my body. Now, I want to tell you something that when you begin to pray, if you begin to, amen, use his word, his word will not return back void. So I began to tell the Lord immediately, I said, God, if you will heal me, I will serve you. I will give all of my life to you. I will do whatever you require of me because I know that you are a healer. I said, by your stripes, I am healed. And I begin to make confessions. I begin to speak and decree out of my mouth. I begin to declare the word of the Lord. And I begin to pray in and out, day and in, making that declaration over my life that God, I know you are a healer. Well, we thank God on today because after 25 years later, I'm no longer blacking out, no longer passing out, no longer having, amen, the infirmity that was in my body. God began to bring deliverance and healing in my body. And I'm healed today. Hallelujah. Over 25 years of total healing, of restoration that came forth in my body. Why? Because I began to pray. Can I tell you that prayer works? Prayer, amen, works on behalf of anyone that will use it. I want to give you, amen, example in the scripture, in the word of the Lord, because I believe that God, amen, has shown us through his word many times that he desires to answer our prayers. Many times we think, that we're praying amiss. We think that we're just praying and that nothing is going to happen. But can I tell you that in the word of the Lord, God has promised us that we are to pray. And when we pray, we shall get a result. We shall get an answer. We shall get a manifestation on our behalf. So you never give up. You know what happens when you give up? You're telling God that you don't believe that he can 
do it. But when you continue to keep that thing before the Lord, you let him know that I know without a shadow of a doubt that you are able to perform my healing. You are able to perform my miracle. You are able to turn my situation around. So I want you to hear the word of the Lord today, a powerful scripture in Isaiah chapter 65, verse 24. The word of the Lord says this. It said, it shall come to pass that before they call, I will answer. And while they are still speaking, I will hear. Now, this is a powerful scripture because I want you to hear that every prayer that we pray, how many know that the Lord is omnipresent? The Lord is omniscient. The Lord here says in the in this book in Isaiah, he says that before you even begin to call, you need to know that I am going to answer. I'm going to release an answer to you of whatever your situation is, whatever your trouble, whatever your problem, whatever you're going through. He said, I need you to understand and to recognize that I'm going to what? Answer you. I'm going to not only just answer you, but I'm going to release, amen, a speedy answer to you. How many know that it says before you even call, God is already ready to release an answer. Before you even, amen, open up your mouth to utter what it is that you're going to pray, God himself is already ready to release an answer on your behalf. So how many know that there are times that when we begin to pray that there is an immediate response. Amen. There is a immediate reaction. There is something amen that is taking place in the heavens that is working to get your prayer answered in the earth. And so there is never a prayer that you can pray that God does not hear. I want to say that again that there is never a prayer that you can pray that God does not hear. God, amen, is ready to answer you right where you are. There's somebody right now today that needs to open up your mouth right where you are and ask the Lord to, amen, heal you. Ask the Lord to bring a miracle for you. Ask the Lord to touch your child. Ask the Lord to touch your parent. Ask the Lord to do something that only he can do. One of the things that's so powerful about prayer is that we understand when we operate in this realm of communion with God, of intimacy with God, it births conviction, amen. It births a conviction. It births a love. It births a passion. It births a unity between you and God of communing one with the other. And so when you cry out to God, when you begin to open up your mouth right where you are and tell the Lord, listen, I have a concern on my heart. The Bible says that if we delight ourselves in him, he will give us the desires of our heart. The Lord wants to, amen, daily load you with benefits. That's the word of the Lord. Amen. And so how do I get the benefits of the Lord? I need to call. Amen. I need to cry out. I need to ask God to release a manifestation on my behalf. I need to, amen, pray. Somebody say pray. Right where you are, God wants you to pray. He wants you to build up that stamina, build up that time, amen, build up that communion. Many times people will do everything else. Their schedules are full. They, they have to go to work. They have to pick up the children. They have to come back home. They have to cook. Then they may need to work or study on something. But I want to tell you today that if you can carve time out to learn how to pray, pray in the morning, pray in the noonday, pray in the evening, take time to speak unto the Lord your God. He is ready to answer. Who am I talking to today? Is there anybody, amen, out there today in TV land that says, you know what? I'm ready to pray. I need to commune with God. Maybe there's somebody out there today who has not been praying like you should. All you need to do is turn yourself around, begin to repent, begin to ask God to forgive you and draw nigh back to him. The Bible says if you draw nigh to him, he'll draw nigh to you. He's so faithful that all he wants you to do is stay in communion with him, stay in connection with him, begin to talk to him and then begin to recognize, you know what? There is so much more that I can share by taking an opportunity to begin to pour out my heart unto the Lord. You know what God says immediately in this scripture? He says, listen, before you call, I'm going to answer. Now, the powerful thing about part B of this same scripture in Isaiah 65 and 24 says this. It says, while you are speaking, I will hear. Amen. So that lets us know that while you are decreeing, while you are declaring, while you are calling upon the Lord, while you are pouring out your concern, he said, 
And while you're speaking, what? I'm already going to answer. I'm already going to release and I'm hearing you. So there is nothing that you can release or say that I, the Lord, will not, amen, hear you and then come back and begin to answer you according to my will. Amen. He will begin to release his answers according to his will. How many know that God has a perfect plan for you? God has something specific that he wants to release in your life. But he said, all I need you to do is petition me. He said, I need you to ask of me. The Bible says in Matthew 7 and 7, it says that we ought to ask, right? Ask of the Lord. Ask and it shall be what? Given. Seek and he shall what? Find. Knock and the door shall be opened. And so the first thing it says, ask and it shall be given. It says that if we ask not, we have not. How many know that it's simple as taking the time to pray? As simple as asking God to bring us in to be able to fulfill that which he wants to do. Listen, we're going to take a moment. We're going to break. And I want to tell you that we will be right back in just a moment. Don't you turn that down because God has more to say to you. Empowering people one at a time with Deborah's voice. Deborah's voice is hosted by Apostle Dr. Dwasin out of Mobile, Alabama. This show will be dealing with various topics such as love, marriage, faith, prayer, and many other topics that you will be tremendously blessed by. The prophetic, the apostolic, global ministry. It will be a way for you to receive all types of teaching, even etiquette, life skills, and things that will be empowering you on your daily basis in life. So, let us get ready to go in and receive Apostle Dr. Duane Jackson. Welcome back. We want to thank you for still watching and being in the midst of this awesome broadcast. I know you're being blessed. I know the power of God is ministering and moving and speaking unto you. Listen, when we left off on the first part of the show, I was right in Matthew chapter 7, verse 7. The Bible says unto you, it says, ask and it shall be given. Seek and you shall find. Knock and the door shall be opened. So you've got to understand that the Bible here is the decreeing and declaring unto us, he says, ask. As children of God, we have a right to ask God. Amen. He says, ask in what? It shall be given. So that means that it is the desire of the Father to begin to cause manifestations to come forth. Do you know that prayer is the key to get anything unto us that God desires? He says, hey, my children, ask of me. And he says, what? It shall be given. It shall be given unto you. It shall manifest for you. He says, and and then all I need you to do is what? Seek and you shall find. If there's something that you're believing God for, as you take it up in prayer, know that the spirit of the Lord is saying that as you seek it out, amen, as you first ask, then it's given, right? So it's given first in the realm of the spirit. Now, once I receive what God has given unto me, I've got to now allow the transfer to take place. So that thing now begins to manifest in the natural. How does it manifest in the natural? Seek and you shall find. Come on, you've got to see this today. He says, ask and it shall be given. So it is given unto us. And then he says, seek and what? You shall find. So you've got to see this because why? How do we know that it's been given unto us? Because there's an example in the word of God in Daniel. When Daniel began to pray and the king of Persia began to hold up, amen, Daniel's prayer, amen, the Lord had already released it, but there was a 21 day period before the manifestation of the release came. So was it given when Daniel prayed? Yes. But when he saw, amen, he continued to seek the Lord, the Lord began to allow it to manifest. Why? Because there was, amen, some contention. There was some fighting. There was some things that the king of Persia began to do to try to hold up your prayer. But how many know that your prayer, amen, can be answered? Why? Because you just keep seeing, seeking and you shall what? Fine. God has a way to get to you anything that he desires for you to have. He says, ask and it shall be given. Seek and what? You shall find. Knock and the door shall be opened. God, amen, is going to open a door for you this week. Oh God, I decree and declare that the spirit of the Lord will begin to answer prayers right now where you are. God's going to release, amen, and open doors 
supernatural increase and manifestation shall come forth for you in the name of Jesus. Why? Because you asked. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Because you begin to pray. Because you begin to connect. Because you begin to commune. God Almighty has a way to manifest on your behalf. God is going to now release the thing that you've been waiting for. Can I tell you, amen, that God's going to bring it to pass? You say, how do you know? Because his scripture says, listen, in Luke 18, 7 and 8, I want to read this. It says, and will not our just God defend protect and avenge his elect ones who cry out to him day and night. That's who pray, children of God. Will he, what, defer them from and delay help on their behalf? Let me read that one more time. He says, he says in Luke 18 and 7, listen to this. It says, and will not our just God do what? Defend and protect and avenge his elect. His chosen ones, that's us, who cry out to him day and night. Will he defer them and delay help on their behalf? No, certainly not. Come on, somebody. I tell you that God said he will what? Defend, he will protect, and then avenge them what? Speedily. Woo, glory to God. That means that God's going to answer your prayer. Amen. How is he going to answer it? Speedily. There's somebody that is waiting right now. You're watching this broadcast. I want you to stop right where you are. Begin to decree and declare and ask the Lord to do something that only he can do and ask for a speedy return. Why? Because I know that my God is a defender. I know that my God is a protector, but also I know that my God shall answer. Glory to God. He says, I'm going to answer you. Now look at this. He said, because when the son of man comes, all he needs to find is faith in the earth. That means I need to just keep praying without ceasing. I need to keep praying with expectation. I need to keep praying and believing and God is going to do what only God can do. Somebody ought to give God a praise on that right there. Why? Because you know that God has the ability to unlock everything that's been hidden from you, unlock everything that's been held up from you, unlock everything, amen, that God wants to manifest for you. All he needs you to do is pray. So listen, I don't need you to dream about it. I need you to pray about it. I don't need you to think about it. I need you to pray about it. I don't need you to wish about it. I need you to pray about it. And as you pray, things begin to happen. As you pray, manifestation begin to come forth. As you pray, the miracle signs and wonders begin to be released on your behalf. Who am I talking to today? It's you, my friend. It's you, my man of God. It's you, woman of God. It's you, child of God. I'm talking to you. God's trying to get something to you today. And the spirit of the Lord told me to tell you, I need some prayer to go for. I need you to send up a prayer. And as you send up a prayer, I'm ready to release it. And I don't need you to stop praying until you see the manifestation. Hear me today. He says, I don't want you to stop praying until you what? See the manifestation. Why? Because I am the one who answers those who cry out day and night. This is the secret. Sometimes we pray something and we stop. Sometimes we pray for something and we don't get the full measure. Why? Because we pray, but we don't, amen, seek that thing out. Hear what I'm telling you today. You have to get adamant in prayer that I will not be denied. Can I tell you that the Lord is saying today that you won't go out empty handed? How do I know? Because he promised us in this scripture. He told us, he said, will I not defend? Will I not release? Will I not cause manifestation to come forth for you? He said, I just need you to cry out. When? Day and night. That means if I prayed this morning, I need to pray this afternoon. If I pray this afternoon, I need to pray tonight. Why? Because I know that God's going to do something for me. Listen, God told me something. He said, I need you to maximize my prayer life. I said, God, what are you saying? He said, maximize your prayer life. He said, I want you to understand. He said, how do you do that? He said, when you begin to pray, don't expect the least, expect the best. Oh my God. He said, don't expect the least, expect the best. So if I'm going to maximize something, that means I want to be able to get the most out of what I'm asking for. I don't ask God for the smallest thing. I ask God for the great thing. Now, how do you know that I know that God wants to do something greater for you? Because in Ephesians 3 and 20 says, now unto him. 
Oh, you got to hear me today. That is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that you would ask or or even think. Do you hear me, my friend? He said, now unto him that is able to do exceedingly. Now, if God himself is saying that he's able to do exceedingly abundantly above, when I first look at that first word, exceeding, and God is saying that, listen, I'm going to defend you. I'm going to protect you. I'm going to answer you. I'm going to watch over you. And now the Lord comes and says, what am I going to do? I'm going to do an exceeding thing. So in order for something to be maximize, I've got to think about it in its biggest capacity in my mind. Now, as I think about it in its biggest capacity in my mind, what happens, God says, I'm going to exceed that. Woo! Who am I talking to today? You need to receive this. As you pray, you got to pray, God, do your exceeding work. Come on. As you pray, God, I'm requesting this, but then God will exceed your request. As you pray, God, I'm asking for this, but then God says, as you seek me, I'm going to exceed it. Why? I'm going to manifest more than what you thought possible. I'm going to release greater. I'm going to cause manifestations to come forth on your behalf. I'm telling you there's power in prayer. Woo! I'm telling you there's manifestation of power in prayer. You need to try it today. You need to take time today and say, you know what? I'm going to pray about it. I'm going to believe God about it. I'm going to step into my place and my posture that God will be able to reveal himself through prayer. Oh my God. You got to understand Jesus was an intercessor. Jesus was one who prayed. Jesus was one that connected. Amen. Jesus loved prayer than his own necessary food at times. Why? Because he understood Understood. He said, I'm coming to you that to make sure that you understand the power and the communion of prayer. And if Jesus had to pray while he was on the earth, how much more should we pray? If Jesus had to manifest prayer while he was on the earth, how much more should we pray? And every time he prayed, how many know the Lord manifested? The Lord came through. The Lord began to manifest miracles, signs, and wonders. He blessed it and broke it before the heavens. Amen. Sometimes he would need kneel down and stoop and cry out before the Lord. Amen. But every time he asked of the father, that father responded. I'm here to tell you today that God wants to respond to your situation. Oh yes, I know there's a mother out there that's saying, you know what? What about my child? What about the one that I've been praying for? What about the one that I've been crying for? I want to tell you today, don't stop praying. Don't stop crying out because God has heard your prayer. And because God has heard your prayer, you shall see an answer. You got to keep decreeing and declaring over that child. You got to keep decreeing and declaring over that one and let them know, I know that the Lord wants to answer my prayer. I know that God can do it. Why? Because I pray. Amen. And he said, if I ask, it shall be given. Come on, somebody. He said that he's the one who's going to defend and protect and release on my behalf. Who am I talking to today? Now, listen, as I close today, as I prepare I want you to see this. God is so powerful that he says, listen, he said, I made prayer a priority even for Jesus. I'm going to close with this because I feel, amen, the spirit of the Lord is ministering to somebody right now. Jesus himself says this. He said, I made prayer my own priority. Listen, he prayed, amen, day and night. Just like I told you in the other scripture, he commanded us to pray day and night. Now in Luke 6, the Lord says, I pray day and night. Why? To make Make sure that what? I got a response. If you want, amen, prayer to be a manifestation in your life, then you got to get serious in your prayer life. Hear me. You know what? People can pack out crowds to hear preaching. People can pack out crowds for stadiums. People can pack out crowds for concerts and any kind of event. But when you get locked into prayer, I tell you, you become God's precious jewel. You become God's good friend. You get on God's good side because God said, oh, I I hear somebody praying. I hear somebody petitioning me. I hear somebody wanting me to work on their behalf. I hear somebody knowing that I am going to respond because I hear a prayer in the atmosphere. Anybody know that God wants to answer your prayer? Listen, Jesus said prayer was so important that he said, even I pray.
prayed over business. Come on, somebody. He prayed over business deals. Jesus began to say, listen, I'm going to release prayer and manifestation over every deal that comes forth. Why? Because I know that there are business deals that God wants to release in this hour. And Jesus himself even began to pray when it came to business. Can I tell you that Jesus began to pray, amen, and manifest even, amen, in the lives of businessmen, amen. He took tax collectors, amen. He took, amen, his disciples and he began to work with them. He began to perfect them even in business deals. Hallelujah. Why? Because he understood the power of prayer. Can I tell you today that somebody, somebody that's watching this, you need prayer in your business. You need prayer, amen, in your personal business. And I want to decree and declare to you that your business, amen, shall prosper. And I want to pray. I'm going to pray for businesses. I'm going to pray for wayward children today. I'm going to pray for marriages today. I'm going to pray amen for you today. That you get into this place of conviction communion and new connections shall birth forth. Miracle signs and wonders shall happen for you today. Let's pray. Father in the name of Jesus Lord, we thank you for this day. We praise you. We glorify you. It's me again, your daughter, your servant. Oh God, I come, Lord God, asking you today, Lord God, for your people that are watching this broadcast. I pray, Father, right now that you will touch homes. You will touch families, God. You will touch those wayward children. You will begin, oh God, to perfect those, oh God, everything that concerns them in the name of Jesus. I pray for business deals to manifest right now, oh God, in the name of Jesus. And I decree and declare, Father, your supernatural manifestation in the name of Jesus. And I believe, God, that we shall testify of everything, God, that you, Lord God, said shall happen on today. And God, we give you the praise, God. We give you the glory and we give you the honor because we know you're going to answer speedily. In Jesus' name I pray, amen and amen. God bless you. And this is your host again, Apostle Dr. Dewan Jackson. Join us again for our next program at the same schedule time. Oh, 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 o